fell down, broke my rod. She doesn't want to be on camera, but it's pretty good. Dream car right there. Beautiful to finally see a river. It's not blown out. Okay, let me show you guys something. Two days, actually it's been about three days. This was the water level. That's about, I don't know, four feet. I didn't come prepared to film or fish, but I've always got a tin car rod with me and a few flies and a little bit of camera gear. So I'm gonna see if I can capture and make just a really short miniature video. No, we got the good old EDC pack. Camera holder there. I got a camera mount that I made on my hiking stick. Oh, well I've always got wieners with me. I'm telling you, Firecracker, you need to step up, sponsor this guy. And then of course you guys know already the Altoid fly box. And inside the pack, of course we got the snack pack. That goes with me everywhere. The pan inside this sock. What do you guys think it is? Or can I do this transition? The $7 DIY black fly Tinkara rod. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys one of the best Tinkara rod holders you can own. It's a good old hiking sock. Pull the plug out. A little piece of Velcro goes in my pocket. This extends out to 270 centimeters, which equates to, I believe, eight, eight and a half feet. But for $7, you, you really can't beat it. I put some baseball grip on the handle. I put these little clips uh, to wrap my line around. And then I just, I've got a floating 1F fly line on here. You could use a level line, you could use a furled line. I was fishing dry flies the last time I had this out, so I just left this line on. I really wasn't planning on fishing today, just kind of out exploring, but I thought I'd make a few casts. So I tied on a little jig, uh, soft, ha soft tackle, size 16. It's just a fly that I tied. This is a wild fish. I believe he was born here. Well, that was cool. Yeah, my hat's all wanged out. Kind of like it like that. What do you guys think? I feel like I'm being watched.
Okay, let me show you guys where the water was. The water would be over my wife's head right now. If you look down, you see how the trees are just cleaned off. I don't know, two weeks ago, it was at flood stage here at this river and we're running at about 150 CFS right now. It was all the way up there. Just a mixture of a bunch of flies I've tied. And it's kind of a paradigm. And I'm just tying a, just a clinch knot. So I've got these little clips right here. Clip those up when I'm done fishing. Start with the bottom section. And I never pull these out too hard. I think that's a misconception is that you need to really, you know, pull them out, pull each section out hard. I just pull them out real soft and it's it's been really effective for me. So then what I do is take the the plug so I'll try to put the line inside one of those little slots there just push it down in like that make sure it's lined up with my and just wind these up put my little velcro strap on and there it is I gotta go hang out with my wife she's patient enough to hang out with me and fish for a few minutes so yeah, she's sitting over there, so let's go hang out there for a minute. Look at this. Ah, oh, it's so... So nice to be back on the river. I think it's winter time. No pun intended. I think, um, Starkiss, reach out to me, man. This tuna creation stuff is pretty good. Four grams of carbs. It's a lot better than eating junk food. Okay, one thing I forgot is 
I want to thank today's sponsor, Joshua Brian Neal, so much for buying today's river snack. Thank you so much. It was because of you I got this pack of tuna, crackers, and a Sprite for my river snack. I don't like that asking you guys for anything, but if you guys want to buy me a river snack, there's a link down in the bio. Uh, and yeah, thanks again, Joshua. Seriously, sincerely, thank you. Snack or not, I appreciate it. These are all the dishes that I gotta do. She doesn't want to be on camera, but man, if I put her on my channel, she's gonna like make me famous. I don't want to be famous, by the way. I just want my channel to succeed. I'm just jigging it upstream, kind of like a streamer. You'd be surprised how effective that can be if you think about all the creatures that are alive, like the amphibians and the sculpins, they all swim upstream against current. And trout can be cannibalistic, where they'll eat young. Or they'll eat fry. These rocks are really slick. All right, I'm just gonna address something. Fell down, broke my rod, which is really sad, because I mean, this rod's got a lot of history with me, but it um, it is it is only a $7 rod, I gotta remember that. But it's something I just wanna say to you guys that I think is important. Let me show you the rock that I fell on. So that I'm recovered a little bit. Sincerely hurt. Okay, so this rock right here. I was standing on the top of it and I moved to turn around and uh, both feet went out from under me. I slid down it, landed on my back and on my hand, which this will be a good lesson for you guys. But the reason I'm, I'm telling you this is because this river has recently and for a while it's been flooded. And so there's just been water flowing over these rocks. And so the tops, tops of the rocks are dry, but there's still enough algae on them that when your feet are wet and you walk on the top of them, they're slippery. So the reason I'm telling you guys this is just be extra careful, wear your best wading boots, take a wading staff, so that way you don't fall down like I did. Ah, oh, this is not gonna feel good. It's so important that it's clean though. I think I'm gonna end the video right there. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you. Um, you guys all have a blessed rest of your day, night, wherever you're at. This is Steve from Black Fly signing out. I will see you on the next episode. We out. That's like some hardcore primitive fishing right there. They got sticks and probably bait. Cool, my thing. Oh, there's a cat. Kitty. I found a cat out here alone.